Before watching this video, you should be comfortable with three facts from lesson G3A. The first fact is that angles round a point add up to 360 degrees. So you should be comfortable with the fact that these four angles, which are around this single point, add up to 360 degrees. The second fact you should be comfortable with is that angles on a straight line add up to 180 degrees. For example, here we've got a straight line and you should be comfortable that these angles add up to 180 degrees. So A plus B would be 180. The third thing you need to know about from lesson G3A is vertically opposite angles. So A and C would be the same because they are vertically opposite. Let's start on this example. First of all, we need to work out what this angle here is. Well, it's on a straight line together with this 65 degree angle. And we know that these two angles on a straight line must add up to 180 degrees. So A is simply going to be 180 minus 65, which will be 115 degrees. And the reason is angles on a straight line add up to 180 degrees. Next, we need to work out what B is. As we said at the beginning of the video, this is vertically opposite the marked 65 degree angle. So these two need to be the same. This also fits in with our understanding of angles on a straight line. These two angles are on a straight line, so they should add up to 180 degrees. And 115 plus 65 is 180 degrees, as we need. To find out what C is, we could use the same fact again. We've got a straight line, and B plus C should add up to 180 degrees. Or we could use the fact that this angle is vertically opposite this angle. Therefore, those two are the same. That means C equals 115 degrees. Before we can work out what the remaining angles down here are, we need to understand alternate and corresponding angles. Before explaining what those are, I'm going to clear the screen and just leave the angles marked for A, B and C. Now, if you ever see a question in an exam about angles and you see that you have got parallel lines in the question, there's a very good chance that it's going to involve alternate or corresponding angles. These only come up when you've got parallel lines. What I'm going to look at first is the size of angle F. I'm going to highlight what looks like an F shape on here. Now I'm going to highlight in red two angles that are under the prongs of the F, as it were. Here's one and here's two. Those two angles are corresponding angles and you get them underneath the prongs of an F shape, but it's really important that we're dealing with parallel prongs on the F. These lines need to be parallel and if they are, then these two angles are corresponding and two corresponding angles are the same size. That means that this value for F is the same as the value for C Therefore, it is 115 degrees. I'll write down the reason. Next, let's take a look at angle D. Now, using your knowledge of vertically opposite angles, you should be able to see that D is also going to be 115. It is vertically opposite this angle marked F. But I'm going to show you how we can use corresponding angles to work out that D is 115 without having to rely on vertically opposite angles. I'm going to highlight an F shape again. Now this F shape is rotated around, so it looks upside down, but it's still an F shape nonetheless. Now the angles under the prongs are here and here. 
Remember, this F shape is upside down, so when I say under the prongs, these are the two angles I'm referring to in this particular case. So we've got corresponding angles, which means they are the same size. Next, we're going to take a look at angle E. Again, the obvious way of working this out, once you know what D is, would be to use the fact that angles on a straight line add up to 180 degrees. But I'm going to show you different ways that you could work out the answer. First of all, spot that you could use corresponding angles again. Here is an F shape. Now, to be fair, this is both upside down and reflected but we've still got an F shape, we've still got parallel prongs, and that means these two angles are corresponding. So E is going to be 65 degrees because it is corresponding to angle B. However, I want to show you yet another way you can work out what angle E is because it involves another skill. What I'm doing now is highlighting what appears to be a Z shape. Now again, it's really important that for this to work, the top and bottom of the Z need to be parallel. And that is what we have in this case because the bits I've highlighted are on two parallel lines. Now, if you have a Z shape like that with the parallel top and bottom, you then have two angles called alternate angles here and here formed by the Z shape and alternate angles are equal. That means E has to be the same as this angle up here, which is 65 degrees. And that fits in with what we saw when we used the rule about angles adding up to 180 degrees here, and when we found out that this angle E was corresponding to this angle B up here with the F shape. So everything is consistent. Just to illustrate the alternate angles though, I'm going to write down that as my reason. I'm just going to illustrate how you could have found angle D using alternate angles as well. Now I'm highlighting what doesn't look much like a Z, but in a way it is. It's slightly out of shape and reflected, but we've still got something that looks a bit like a Z. And it involves two parallel lines again, top and bottom of this reflected Z and the two alternate angles in here are this one and this one. So we could have found that D was 115 degrees because it is alternate to angle C. So as well as being corresponding to angle A it is also alternate to angle C and therefore the same size as that. So we would get 115 degrees either way. Finally, let's move on to angle G. Again, there are lots of ways you could work out the size of G. You could say that it is vertically opposite angle E. You could say that these two angles, D and G, need to add up to 180 degrees. But just to use one of the new skills from this lesson, I'm going to show you how G is corresponding to this 65 degree angle. Corresponding angles, remember, needed that F shape is an F. Again, this is a reflected F, but underneath the prongs we have two corresponding angles. Corresponding means they are the same, so G is going to be 65 degrees. The most important point to take away from this video is that alternate and corresponding angles only appear when you are dealing with parallel lines. You either need to have parallel prongs on your F shape or the top and bottom of a Z shape to be parallel in order to have corresponding or alternate angles. So before you go looking for F and Z shapes in diagrams involving angles, make sure you've got a pair of parallel lines in there first of all. If the diagram does have parallel lines, then there's a very good chance, as I've said, that the question will involve alternate or corresponding angles, or maybe even both. Finally, I'll mention something a colleague of mine does to stop students getting mixed up between alternate and corresponding angles. She talks about zoltanate angles, 
to remind them that alternate angles are the ones you get inside the Z shape and corresponding for the fact that corresponding angles are found under the prongs of an F. Obviously don't use these words in your actual answers to questions, they are not real words, but they are ways of helping you remember that alternate angles are the ones in the Z and corresponding angles are the ones in the F.